All right, book club. We are going to get in our dark psychology, y'all. This is our dark psychology book. Talking about the uh, learn the art of persuasion, how to influence people, hypnosis, manipulation techniques, NLP secrets, analyze body language, mind control, and emotional intelligence. This, I feel like this has a lot about narcissists. So if you've been in a narcissist relationship, this book will help you understand. It, it even... Uh, it has chapters in here on uh, love bombing, uh, blackmailing, anchoring, love con, the dark triad, what is narcissism, how to escape it, and stuff like that. So if you guys have been in a narcissist relationship, whether married, uh, this book will definitely help you. Uh, so let's go to... Um, what do I want to leave off? What do I leave off at? I think it was the triad I think we left off at. I don't even know if we got to the seduction part or not. We did gaslighting. We did that, I think. I don't know if this might have been it right here. Okay. Okay, let's go with the, uh, we're going to go over here to this chapter over here, or this part over here. Page, uh, where did we go? Page 105, dark manipulation and mind control. Okay, dark manip manipulation and mind control. All right, discover ways you can use mind control every day. Use the secret techniques and psychology. Analyze and influence people with NLP, with persuasion, and achieve success in your life. Okay, every aspect of the human has two sides, positive and negative. But it depends on us how we use it for our own good as well as for others. So this is not to teach you to manipulate others and abuse others but this is to show you when you know so you can point out when somebody's basically manipulating you okay so this is just to inform you not for you guys to use it in the wrong way to manipulate somebody else and play on somebody else's emotional intelligence you know that's how people get hurt so this is so if this is for the empath usually you know so you y'all can see what is being done to y'all by people around y'all friends, family, or enemies trying to use some certain manipulation techniques to try to get y'all to do what they want, all right? It says, you may think that manipulation is sort of dark psychology used mostly for wrongdoings, again, and harmful deeds. On the other hand, please take in account that it can be used positively as well. It is all in your hand how you want to use it. As far as persuasion is concerned, people use it in every field and in every aspect of their lives. For example, a salesperson will always try to persuade you to buy, buy, to buy his or her recommended product, even if you don't want to. Persuasion also has two aspects when it is being applied. If you try to persuade somebody to do something illegal or unethical, that is part of the dark psychology. So the dark psychology is when people are getting y'all to do something that is not ethical, like break laws, uh, do, do underhanded shit. You know what I'm saying? Stuff that you know that can come back on you and get you, okay? They try to persuade you to do the, their dirty work. So you're in trouble, not them, because you'll be the one getting caught, right? It says, but if you persuade someone to get out or not to do certain things, that are not beneficial in any means in an extreme in an extreme case let's say suicide then you are using it for the purpose of good okay so if you're trying to talk somebody out of a suicide or jumping off a bridge or something then yeah you used it for the good but then if you're if somebody's trying to get you to go rob a bank then that's bad okay that's bad so you got to know the difference between the good and the bad and the consequences that come behind those actions, okay? Okay, everything you do or you perceive is all in your mind and you are the controller of it. 
So you control what's going across your mind. Even though you see a lot of shit, you are in control of it. Whether y'all gonna act on it or not. Uh, if you don't want to, no one can make you do things without your will and consent. Okay, so y'all got that? Nobody can make y'all do things without your will and consent. Also, it is essential part of living life to observe your surroundings and the people around you. If you do not notice the small things and interpret them wisely, then you are more likely to fall prey to something negative or hazardous. Facial expressions, body language, gestures, and words, and tone used can predict a lot about people if observed closely. If you fail to recognize such signals, then tend to negatively that tend to negatively, then you will not be able to keep yourself safe from them. It says, da, da, da. where'd I go? Dark psychology is considered too smart. Oh, sorry. Dark psychology is considered to start from the point where you have no intent or motive to do things other than your self-satisfaction and pleasure. And in return, it is detrimental to other people persons or even to the community it says every living person has this dark side but not all of them let the dark side overcome them so everybody that's why you shouldn't push people because y'all don't know that's like road rage right people that do that road rage shit you never know what you push people you don't know what they're going through and then you get that road rage and then that's when they're chasing you down the freeway or something once you are exposed to the side, there is no coming back. So always watch yourself and surroundings so that you can keep yourself off of any harm. Persuasion, manipulation, and other forms of influence are ambiguous. You can pick up on someone's obvious signs here and there, but there are also hidden secrets, hidden secret ways that others control you, which you might never be able to fully realize. Mm. To those who are not fully aware of the manipulation and what it is all about, it is hard to see that the person generally takes three steps. Most of us will just think of manipulation as one thing. There need to be two additional things to the act of manipulation which will make sure that the manipulation is successful. Perhaps you are trying to sell something, maybe yourself or your brand, and you need to figure out how to get people to be more persuaded by you to help you achieve the things that you want in life. No matter where you are and what you are trying to do, you have all the tools that you will ever need to be persuasive or influential. There are a few things that you need to know to be introduced to this topic to get into the right mindset as you read through the next text. First, understand that no two manipulations are alike, nor two people are easily persuaded the same way either. Y'all hear that? That's why you can't take all this advice because nobody, no two people are alike. It ain't no one one type of manipulation go for everybody, not even in the dating world. It's different from people to people. This, it says, though it might seem like this sometimes, especially since you can influence a group all at once, you cannot let yourself fall into a thinking pattern where you place everyone in the same category. And that's exactly what's going on with the dating stuff. They're trying to place everybody in the same category which is going to backfire because you can't place everybody in the same category. You guys can only go by what you're dealing with, who you're dealing with, make it be an individual thing. Even in, in spirituality, you can't put everybody in the same category. Everybody's not doing the same thing. Everybody's different. Everybody's not called to do the same thing. And so everybody's trying to keep everybody in a category in the same box. And, it, and this book is clearly telling you, you, you it's, it's no way. No, no two manipulations are alike. Manipulators are alike. Don't blame yourself for not being aware of the ways that you have been manipulated in the past. Regret is not going to do you any good in this journey. So it is best to leave behind those feelings of 
I wish I would have known this sooner, okay? All you can do now is move on and we will help you every step of the way. So don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourself. You know, that's that little saying, what, what, what people like to ask, uh, what is something you would change if you, what, how you go, what's that question? What is something if you had known when you were younger, you would or would not do? That's kind of reminds me of that, that uh, thing. So don't blame yourself. Just move on. So don't blame yourself. Just move on. Y'all know me. I love the scrabble in my books. <laughs> okay, manipulation and mind control. That was like a little introduction to the chapter. Oh, I need to put... Uh, let me get my little poster things in case my page flop over. I know I have it. All right. Uh, let's see. Mind control is based on one thing, information. We have the thoughts and benefits that we do because we have learned them. The term mind control has many definitions and interpretations, but the crucial thing to note is that it does not involve any sort of magic or supernatural ability. It just requires a rudimentary understanding of human emotion and behavior. That's pretty much psychology, ain't it? <laughs> Behavior, human, be human behavior. It's like animal behavior, right? Once you understand the animal kingdom, you should part in part understand the human kingdom. It says mind control can involve brainwashing a person, re-educating them, reshaping their thoughts, using co coercive techniques to persuade them to certain things or brain sweeping. There are many forms of mind control, and we could fill an entire book discussing all the forms. But for our purpose, we look like we look at the con concept in general terms. Mind control means a person is trying to get others to feel, think, or behave in a certain way, or to react and make decisions following a certain pattern. It could vary from a girl trying to get her boyfriend to develop certain habits to a cult leader trying to convince his or her followers that he or she is God. Like that David Koresh. Who was the other one? It was somebody else. Uh, uh, David Koresh was the Texas one. Uh, it was a couple other ones. A couple other crazy ones, right? Um, when we deliberately and consistently subject to new information, it is possible to modify our beliefs, thoughts, and even our memories. The brain is hardwired to survive, and to the end, it is very good at learning information that is crucial for our survivor survival. When you consistently receive certain information, your brain will start to believe it, even if you know it is not true. Y'all hear that? That's why you got to look, listen to those informations. That's why you got to listen, watch, and observe, and watch for those persuasion, that auto-suggestion, and those suggestions and stuff. Because you'll start to believe it if you listen to the same shit over and over and over again, whether you want to or not. Whether you think it's true or not. For example, even if you are the most rational person out there, if you go online and watch 100 videos about a certain conspiracy theory, theory you will start to believe it. To some, to some extent. That explains why people who seem smart can end up getting indoctrinated into cults or even into terrorist groups. Wow. Boy, they got this shit all figured out. God damn. This book is deep. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> they got this damn thing. Y'all might want to get that book out there, you know? It's, it's, you know. Don't be scared of it being thick. Don't be, don't be, no, don't be no scaredy cat. That book is, this book is good. Mind control also works more effectively when one is dependent on the person who is trying to control your mind. That's why you need to do for yourself 
so you don't have to be mind control thinking you you need this person for this that and the other right it's that even in forced relationships the victim could start buying the perpetrator's worldview if they have been dependent on the perpetrator for a long time they explain the so-called stockholm syndrome where people who are kidnapped or held hostage start to be friendly towards their captors and to emphasize with their causes. Yep, they make excuses for them. The worst thing you can do is assume that you are too smart for mind control to work on you. Under the right circumstance, anyone can be persuaded to abandon their worldview and adopt somebody else's. The uh, mind games are co covert tricks that are deliberately crafted in order to manipulate someone. Think of them as handcrafted psychological manipulation techniques. While other techniques are applied broadly, mind games are created to target very specific people. They work best when the victim trusts the predator and the predator understands the victim's personality and behavior. Most of the psychological manipulation techniques work well when a person who understands you tells you certain things or behave in certain ways, trying that you react in a certain way. It almost always involves finging certain emotions. People who play mind games use innocent sound communication to elicit calculated re reactions from you. Psychologists refer to such mind games as conscious open comments no conscious one upmanship and they occur in an, in all areas of life mind games take place in office politics personal relationships and even in international diplom diplomacy diplomacy i'm sorry at work someone can try to make you feel like you are not up to the task so that they can steal an opportunity from you in a marriage, your partner could make certain seemingly innocent remarks against you so that you can feel like you have nothing to prove. I mean, so that you feel like you have something to prove and that as a result, you take a certain course of action in dating. There are pickup artists who use different kinds of tricks to get you to lower your guard and let them in. Mind control is not the whole of the vague information you hear in gossip accompanied by conspiracy theories. It is the product of self experiment with systematic studies dating back to World War II, perhaps older. Of course, the 20th century totalitar totalitarian regimes who wanted to robotize, roboticize their subject also played a major role in this. Therefore, the first thing to note is that developing technology facilitates the mind control efforts of the oppressors every year. That's all these platforms, right? Depending on what you're looking at. Like the telegram Scrooge that happened today. Be mind, but mind control is something that can be done without technology. With the support of psycholo psychology, as the orator. The most striking recent example of this in history is the work carried out by Geo Bells, G O E B B E L S, the Nazi Minister of Propaganda. He succeeded in engraving his name in golden in gold letters on this lane which was a disgrace for humanity. Wow. Mind control. It is the name given to all the unethical activities of some power centers to manage people in line with their goals, to shape their ideas, and to control their lifestyles. While technology, while technological opportunities can be utilized in mind control, human psychology, propaganda knowledge, and social engineering are essential. Also, mind control applied in a highly systematic, insidious way by people who have done as much research as required by a master or doctor. 
In other words, it is essential that people don't realize the engineering applied to them so they can be hypnotized. Therefore, it is challenging to recognize and resist. Not, I mean, also not every poli political or intellectual propaganda is mind control. Mind control, as described before, is a different matter. Okay. So here goes some um, hey, manipulation always is manipulation always wrong? Okay, we're going to read this and then we're going to go to some other books. So I'm going to cut it off, load this one up, and then I'll go to some other books over here. Um, so this one, effects of mind control on humans. The effects of using mind control on humans are seen in different ways. Some of them are as follows. Memory loss and behavior disorder. Change in direction, intensity, and content of the sounds heard, speech deterioration, severe heart palpitation, forcing shoulders and arms accidentally during laborious work, jogging of the elbows, and different difficulty to work while doing something, pain and unnecessary movement of the legs, right and left swing, and excessive stiffness, itching and blushing in hard to reach areas, contradiction of large muscles in the back, oh, contractions, contractions of large muscles in the back, uh, checking neck gesture, reading thoughts or transmitting thoughts from outside, Seeing imaginary moving images, keep eyelids constantly open, oh, keeping eyelids constantly open, continuous tet tetanitis. Well, sounds like spiritual awakening to me, but I mean, <laughs> hold up, hold up, wait a minute, let me get some clarification in this shit. Oh, well, not all of it sound like, uh, that Ted Knight is sometimes the ringing in the ears is what spiritual awakening is. I guess you gotta, everybody gotta figure it out for themselves, okay? You gotta uh, figure it out for yourself. But that was just some. Of course, I don't know where they get these studies from or this stuff from. So you just gotta go with that. So that is gonna conclude that. Oh, well, let's do the bait. Okay, no, let's not. Oh, let's, well, let's skim this one a little bit. Seven powerful covert, covert emotional manipulation techniques. They can happen on various levels, okay? As we already discussed how fear is a very powerful emotion but it is not the only one, okay? How about greed? Yep, greed and fear, right? Uh, that works just as good as fear. People who are driven by ambition can be easily had with statements such as, think of all the money you can make. Yeah, that's people that's greedy. Such a statement can drive a greedy person over the edge, okay? By the same token, if you're dealing with someone who is overly frugal, a statement such as, think of all the money you could save will hit their sweet spot. <laughs> it said, the point here is that you need to know that the person you are dealing with in order to make your manipulation attempt ring true. Emotional blackmail. That's one. While, while blackmail is very common as far as holding dam, damning information on someone, emotional blackmail can be just as damaging. This occurs when the manipulator has some type of control over the victim and then uses this control to extort them. Okay. Intimidation is one. 
is effective insofar as the target is vulnerable enough to fear the possible the possibility of aggression from the manipulator. Thus, intimidation is nothing more than a threat. The manipulator doesn't necessarily have to act on it, but they do have to be as convincing as possible. Manipulators generally find out what the victim fears most and proceeds to attack them from that angle. Whenever the victim reveals their fears, the manipulator is able to latch on and take advantage of such a situation. Okay, I'm going to drop, uh, that's the example, so I'm going to drop down. Bait and switch is the third one. The blame game is four. So in this tactic, the manipulator knows that they have something the other wants. The other want. It doesn't really matter what it is. What counts is that they have something that the others seek. So the manipulator is perfectly willing to dangle it in front of the other and then take it away. It says, when this occurs, the manipulator lays down a set of rules and conditions that the victim must meet if they want to have access to what they have. As long as the victim complies, everything is swell. However, a real, the real kicker is that the manipulator will never actually let the victim get what they want. They only string them along until the victim is eventually exhausted and gives up. Less sophisticated manipulator will give their victims a taste of what they want in hopes of enticing them to continue complying with their wishes. That's the bait switch. That's a lot of, that's a lot. People do that with knowledge in a spiritual community. People do that with dating, uh, bait switch you, tease you, uh, play with your mind, you know, give you a little, take something back, you know, make false promises. We're going to do this. They don't do that. They don't follow through, uh, things like that. So y'all just got to look at each, each, uh, scenario and assess it. This type of technique is used to prey on the emotional needs of a person and is not limited to romantic relationships. This can also occur when a manipulator uses, when a manipulator senses that someone is desperate to make money, the manipulator then uses this need to manipulate the victim with the promise of easy money or a steady income. The victim all goes along, let me see, the victim goes alone only to be cheated at some point okay so blame game guilt is one of the most powerful manipulation techniques known to man to humankind it says guilt can be used to manipulate people by making them feel inferior for the help and support they have received at some point like when you become successful in your journey a lot of people like to project guilt and feel make you feel guilty that you you've done the work and you've leveled up and these are your rewards so people will be that's intimidation right they'll be intimidated by your success they'll feel guilt make try to project that guilt so you'll feel bad that you're successful or you know you got your blessings or you're manifesting blah 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 it says it can also be used to get others to feel inadequate due to the condition they have think of all those times you hear people say Things would be different if you weren't sick. This is one of the most rudimentary, rudimentary, rudimentary means of making someone feel guilty, yet it is highly powerful. Also, you have to hear others say, say things like, remember when you needed my help? Yeah, now I need yours. Okay, this is a clear attempt at co coaxing someone, coercing or coaxing someone to go along with the manipulator's intentions. Wow, very common in the workplace, that one is. Okay, manipulators can play the guilt card or can play the shame card by using morals. Triangulation is in here. Insinuation is in here. Okay, and law, the law of state, the law of state transference. Oh, there's that what is in NLP right there. Let me put a bookmarker so I can get this the next time. I don't know. I may do this again this end of this week so we can, uh, I want to at least go over that one, that NLP one. Okay. 
Oh, wow. <sighs> Another divisive technique used to exert undetected mental influence is referred to as insinuation. When they make an insinuate, insin I don't know if I said that wrong the first time. Insinuation. The innocent manipulator allows what is a deliberately crafted insinuating statement to elicit an awkward emotional response. If you take offense, they will inform you that it is not what they said. Oh, they try to backtrack, try to renege on it. Oh, that's not what I meant. No, damn well, that's what they meant. You know, then they're going to try to fix the situation, fix the comment. You got to watch people like that. If you take offense, they'll be like, oh, that's not what I said. The comment is generally uh, presented as a compliment, but not a very encouraging one. But it is enough vile to underestimate you. The trainer understands what will annoy you. And he or she will be happy to launch such a grenade and see how the fault see how the fault lies. Their comments are intended to have various possible interpretations that will cause a lot of hurt and doubt. Triangulation is another often one controlling people that of a triangulation. This is an effect tactic in a manipulator's arsenal in which a partnership is formed between the manipulator, you, and the third party. The main purpose of this is to give the victim a feeling of confusion about how the partnership will work, causing the victim to have an intense love for the manipulator, but at the same time thinking about the old lover the manipulator had, the third party, or simply bringing up the third party as someone unexpectedly found. For example, at the gym, is it is much worse if you create vague, negative poor relations between yourself and the third party. Their target are concerned primarily about fear. When you confront them and inform you that you that your hold on, when you confront them and inform you that your real problem is your de depression and your low self-worth they will deny involvement that the third party with the third party what is that you were listening before it is also no exception for the manipulator when using the scheme in a strategic way to view the third party as their next target Mm -hmm. The law of state of transference. In this text, the law is the state referring to a person's general mood, for example, of a strong congruent state. And when a person's thoughts, words, and actions are aligned, the state, the law of state of transference refers to the ability to transfer an emotional state from one person to another. The person with the balance of power is any particular situation in any particular situation can shift their emotion state emotional state to the individual they are communicating with when used as a dark persuader this is a powerful concept if somebody tries to persuade people and understand that the law of the law state of transference may they may use a strategy to manipulate their level of control over their target at the start the influencer persuade pressures their own state to the suit of natural state and their subject of their subject the influencer will then force their state where the subject is for instance feeling sad and ta talking slower than usual in the same format therefore they establish a connection with their subject at a deep subconscious level this is another means of establishing rapport after a state match is done the influencer begins to subtly change their own state to measure the victim's compliance for example the persuader can slightly intensify their tone of voice to see if their target is at the same pace as them if the victim is slowing signs of conformity 
conformity, it clearly shows that the influencer has reached a hook point. Once a hook point is reached, the influencer is going to change the state of the subject to the state that they want. This could rather, this could either be nice and positive or angry and negative, depending on the situation the best that best suits the purpose of the influencer. This approach illustrates the effect of subconscious cues on the success or failure in the process of persuasion. Dang. All right, y'all. That's it. That is that book. We will do, I think we're going to do NLP. Yeah, that's only one little few little chapter. We're going to do that next. Thank y'all for book club. This is going to be on there. I appreciate you. Peace, love, and harmony. Read a book while it's free.